Let's talk about why there are diamonds on the surface of the Crater of Diamonds State Park today when diamonds are created under conditions of intense pressure and heat more than 100 miles deep in the earth. And the way they got here is there was earthquake faulting along this line and a weak spot in the earth and that allowed volcanic material to burst up to the surface and bring the diamonds with it. So here the diamonds are created in the diamond stability zone more than a hundred miles deep in the earth. And when they exploded to the surface, you know, it was a, it was a big <laughs> volcanic event. And then the ash and diamonds and ash meaning burnt rocks uh, settled back down and at one time was 150 feet higher than current. This is the current search territory level. It was 150 feet higher and there's been erosion over the years that washed a lot of silt away and concentrated diamonds on the surface of the state park. Now everything about the, this is a real old picture of the crater of diamonds. Everything is accurate except this carrot shaped intrusion. Uh, this pipe, as it's called, um, they thought it was kimberlite at one time, and kimberlites are carrot-shaped because they are propelled by CO2 gas. In other words, carbon dioxide is what propels them. Because when there's an earthquake, things don't come up, things fall into a crack in the earth. Well, with the CO2 gas pressure built up here, hundred miles deep when there was a crack it it forced things to the surface under great pressure so that's how a kimberlite pipe looks is um, a carrot shape and over here we're at the crater of diamonds museum in their visitor center and it says chemical analysis have shown that volcanic rock is that here at the Crater of Diamond State Park is chemically different from kimberlite bearing kimberlite diamond bearing rocks in Africa. Our volcanic rocks are called lamperite and are usually rich in potassium. Now Prairie Creek's volcano, now that that is the Crater of Diamonds has always been known as a Prairie Creek intrusion. So Prairie Creek's volcanoes lamperite lava contained large amounts of gas and water vapor exploded and formed lava froth. The lava around each froth gas bubble immediately hardened. However, the gas inside each bubble kept expanding and blew the hardened lava walls apart, forming tiny volcanic fragments called volcanic ash. The gas-rich explosion shot the resulting volcanic ash and bits of lava high into the air, just like champagne that comes out of a champagne bottle when the cork is removed. The ash cloud may have rivaled the cloud formed by the 1848 Krakatoa volcano, the largest historic volcanic eruption. The ash cloud collapsed and filled the 600 foot deep crater with ash and diamonds. Later eruptions of lamprite lava pushed into the crater but never flowed out onto the surface. So the crater of diamonds, there were multiple pyroclastic events here so it wasn't just one event that brought it to the surface. Uh, I want to go over here and look at a little more information um, <clears throat> there was a, a phase one geologic investigation at the Crater of Diamonds. It was conducted in 1990 and 1992 to determine the size and shape of the diamond pipe. The pipe contains over 46 million cubic yards of diamond bearing soil and has a surface area of 80.3 acres. It extends to a depth of at least 669 feet 
and is martini glass shaped, not carrot shaped like, like uh, the other picture showed. It ranks as the eighth largest diamond bearing pipe in the world in surface area. But you'll, if 80.3 acres seems funny to you, you may think, well, there's only 37 acres of search field, and you're absolutely right about that. So let's look at this map just a minute. If I can get us set up, and we'll talk about it just a little. So here is the volcanic boundary, but this rabbit shape is the search territory. This is 37 acres, and this is East Hill, Middle Hill, and West Hill. And that is magmatic lamperite for the most part, and it's not searchable, so it's not diamondiferous. So although the volcanic area is 80 acres, only 37 acres is being searched right now. Actually, we shouldn't be searching north of the mineshaft building, and we should be searching west of the west drain. But they're only giving us this for a search area right now. But anyhow, um, we have kind of a, a roundish uh, oval volcanic area and there's many intrusions that brought the diamond bearing material to the surface. But underground, when they core drilled it, they learned it wasn't carrot shaped, but it was martini glass shaped or funnel shaped. So that's what it looks like there. And they core drilled to a depth of 669 feet in one place. But of course, if they found the exact center, it would go down 100 miles. So that's just a little look and a little caulk at the volcanism. And uh, here's a look at, at the core, the lamperite core that they drilled. They drilled and brought up these pieces of rock and analyzed the lamperite core and at depth. And, and uh, this is a core drill bit that they used. I didn't help in the core drilling at the Crater of Diamonds, but I did core drill outside the state park when we were exploring the other seven diamond pipes outside the park. But, uh, anyway, that's just a little look, a little education about the volcanic event here at the Crater of Diamonds.